the business of the music business with Erica Von Kleist. Welcome to this episode of the business of the music business with yours truly, Erica Von Kleist. This video is part one of my money mini series. Min mini money series. Money mini. Money, 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 money. Part one, money management. First of all, I wanna be clear on something. I'm not a qualified financial professional. See that ticker down there? That says that the information in this video is purely anecdotal based on my personal experiences. For real financial advice, talk to a CPA. Money can be a conundrum for many musicians because so many of us are self-employed and we work for many people as opposed to one employer. For more information on what self-employed means, watch my video called, What is a Musician? The tricky part about being a musician is that often our gigs pay different amounts depending on the situation and most of our gigs are not regular. Unless you work for an employer like a cruise ship or a university, it can be difficult to know how much money you're going to make in a year, which can affect decisions like budgeting for groceries, planning a trip to see family, buying a car, etc. I've broken it down to a few big general pieces of financial advice. Plan ahead. Plan your gigs at least three to six months out minimum. Tours should be planned six to 12 months in advance if you want your pick of dates and venues. But in general, I suggest always knowing how much money you're gonna be making for the next six months. If you work on any shorter time frame, though, you might be at risk for not having enough money to pay your bills down the line. Oh yeah, and don't forget about contracts. You don't want to miss out on a $5,000 gig because the person who booked you backed out. Cover your butt. And for more information, watch my video on contracts. When you take a gig, consider the hidden costs of said gig. Is there a commute involved? Should you plan on eating out or is dinner provided? Do you need to get a new outfit? All of these expenses can add up and it's important to assess them all so you know what your net income is. What does net income mean? To understand net, we first need to understand gross. Gross income defines the total amount of money that you've made on a gig. If the gig pays $500, then the gross income is $500. The net is what you net after expenses. Think about it like fishing. What's left in the net is what you make on the gig after all of the expenses have fallen through the mesh. When taking a gig, consider all of these unintended expenses so that you know how much you're actually making. Consider starting a company. I own a limited liability corporation. I run a lot of my work through my LLC because it limits my personal liability should anything happen and my company gets sued. It also helps me maintain division between my personal and professional expenses, and it makes it really easy to pay other musicians and keep track of business expenses. It helps to keep things clean. You can register one through your state or use any number of online aggregates to help you. I'd recommend getting in touch with a qualified professional like a lawyer who understands business who can help you set it up right the first time. Save money. This industry is feast or famine and your income is gonna go up and down. Don't get caught spending all of your money and then all of a sudden find yourself super broke during an off season. Start stashing a monthly sum of money away into an account that provides compound interest. Compounding interest means that that account will build exponentially over time, and when you retire, you'll have a nest egg to live off of. It can be hard to think about retirement when you're like graduating from college, but it comes a lot quicker than you think. I'm not a qualified professional to thoroughly explain this to you. Talk to a financial planner and they'll get you dialed in. But I will tell you where I'm a bit of an expert on saving money, in the kitchen. I don't mean saving money inside your kitchen. I mean saving money on groceries. Yay! I'm going into this all-American grocery store with a $10 bill, and I'm gonna come out with enough ingredients to make four portions of something. What? I'm not sure. Let's go digging. I'm using animal protein in this dinner, which is gonna be the most expensive part of our bill. If you use plant-based protein, however, a lot of times your grocery bill will be a lot cheaper. Food for thought, literally. Ooh, look at this hot Italian turkey sausage for $3 off. Bingo! I'm gonna make some kind of Italian turkey sausage vegetable thing over a starch. Hmm, let's go get some tomatoes. 
crushed tomatoes, 68 cents a can. Vegetables, 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 vegetables. 78 cents a pound for onions, don't mind if I do. 78 cents each for garlic. I got two of these bad boys for a dollar. I ran into my friend Will, hey Will. Shopping in the bulk section can save you a lot of money because then you can just buy what you need for that one recipe. I was gonna make polenta with my sausages, but it looks like they're out of ground cornmeal. I think I'm gonna go with good old fashioned pasta. It's my lucky day. That package of pasta might be cheaper, but check it out. It's 12 ounces, which means you're paying for less food. I'm gonna go with the more expensive one. That's $1.38, but it's a full pound of pasta. Pretty sure I came in under budget. Let's cook. Water, oil, slice, salt, chop, mince, dump, red wine, leftover from Christmas. Oregano, garlic powder, salt, pepper. Simmer uncovered so that the liquid boils off and go practice while you're waiting. Salt. Don't. Don't burn it. Al dente. Drain. Plate. Top with cheese. Eat. You guys, this is so good. And this entire batch was just over $8, which goes to show you knowing how to cook is an important skill to save you lots of money. Freezer, fridge, done. Pro tip, if you have a graduation, birthday or holiday coming up and you know people are gonna be getting you gifts, ask for a gift certificate to a supermarket. This way you can use that money for items like spices, oils, baking products, so that you're ready to cook. Another pro tip, I always keep protein bars in my saxophone case. So if you just need something to get you through the gig or your last lesson, having a nosh in your bag can really come in handy. The last thing you wanna do is eat your paycheck. It's really important to know how you can stretch a buck and still eat healthy, delicious quality food and not regularly hemorrhage 25 bucks every time you get takeout. Okay, you've made it through part one of the money series. Part two is taxes. Don't be scared. It's better to know what to do than to be surprised if the IRS ever comes a knocking. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Bomb with yours truly, Erica Von Kleist. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check me out at ericavonkleist.com.